his personality to show up at an 8 in the morning class here in the wilds of Oklahoma. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Ray. Pat. Thank you. Thank you. All right, before I put you back to sleep with a bunch of grandstanding and storytelling, let's, uh, let's do some warming up. It's a judo class, right? Amen. So let's, uh, let's get a partner. Here's the, here's the warm up that y'all are used to. Just uh, stroll across the mat and pick up a leg. And stroll and pick up a leg each time. All right, find you a partner. And uh, y'all can go this way so that it doesn't take 30 minutes to get down the mat. Uh, find you a partner and Dayashi back and forth, foot sweep to control. Yame, yeah, a couple of hints. You already all know this, but I'll say it just so that I sound smart. Uh, you want to make sure when you step in to foot sweep this guy. If you point your foot at him, you will have difficulty sweeping over here because you're uh, binding your own knees. Also, you're putting some sideways stresses on your knee. So you actually want to turn this leg, your standing leg outward a little bit. We had a student a few years back break her knee because she tried to sweep this way. So. So point your foot out the direction that you're going to be sweeping. You get a larger range and your knee works the, the proper direction. All right. So play a couple more rounds of that. Throw in another hint. Uh, one thing I would like you to, uh, to try to pay attention to is make sure that not only is your foot turning out, but there's a ball of gum stuck under your foot and you're trying to scrape that off on the mat because you don't want to grab this guy's leg up here <laughs> you get less leverage you would like to uh, sweep this guy's leg right at oh i missed it right at the right at the foot ground intersection right there so the, one of the best ways that i've found to remind myself of that is remind myself to scrape gum off the bottom of my toes right so scrape gum scrape gum scrape gum one or two more uh, rounds and I'll tell you something one of the things that you will notice about this guy that we're talking about this weekend Tokyo Hirano when you look at the films is he is very agile uh, and like all the great masters he pays a lot of attention to footwork so let's uh, let's continue this exercise that we've been doing and change it up a little bit this time you're only doing your right foot so you have to follow with your other one and catch back up in order to only do your right side then he does his right side then you do your left then he does his left so that it's a uh, sweep skip sweep skip pattern play this with your partner Okay. The problem uh, <coughs> after I catch this sweep and he steps back off of it, I'm not in position for the for the next one unless I move over here with him. And the same thing here, I'm not in position to immediately try the second thing. Uh, understanding I think some of the things that uh, Sensei model shows you very similar to that last one he takes a step back I pick the inside of this foot up and nudge it back scoot up and pick this one scoot and push this one and pick this one push this one and pick this one notice there's a catch up between each action all right. This this right here, this little nudge is um, is brilliant because it forces these two feet to land at about the same time, which places our bodies in sync. Right. So we're in sync 
but your your next job is to step up so that you're in position as well as being in sync all right play that one then we'll move to so the nudge uh, gets him moving and it uh, gets us in sync so you don't really want to be sliding that leg sideways it's like uh, flicking dirt off off of your foot all right so it's a it's a forward nudge instead of a pushing sideways thing that was uh, largely warm up it's largely stuff that we were already doing uh, but we said in all of our advertising that I was going to lay some amazing magic on you from <coughs> uh, Tokyo Hirano mm -hmm. from back in the day so who is this guy uh, some years back we got to exploring YouTube looking for cool judo stuff and we found this guy and he was uh, probably middle-aged is probably a 1950s video and he's all bouncing around and light and dancing and uh, just turning people upside down all over the place and we uh, got to exploring specifically his videos and there's all sorts of crazy arm waving and spinning around like this and I'm not exaggerating it's crazy looking so uh, I wrote Nick a email said what is this guy doing? He said, I don't know. Why don't you explore that for a few years? <laughs> I, I seriously do not know, and I still do. Thanks. Not know. <laughs> so uh, it was probably five years of watching this guy's videos before and talking to people that had actually touched him before uh, he started to make some sense. After we, uh, after we warm up, what is one of our first primary learning tools for judo? How do you learn to do a judo throw? Uchikomis, all right. One of the things that uh, this guy did to develop his skills, and let me, uh, let me sidetrack a little bit. We're not talking about just some random guy doing crazy stuff. Looking back at the history of Tokyo Hirano, this was the winningest competitor in history. Uh, he moved from Japan to, uh, Western Europe somewhere in the 50s and within six years he had accumulated 4,300 Ippons. That's 700 contest wins a year. All right. So uh, people got to asking this guy how did you do the thing that you did and he starts spinning around like this and waving his arms like this <clears throat> and we'll get to that part. But uh, the, the other segment besides the wave in the arm thing that you see on the internet is this uh, wonderful rhythmic uchikomi, all right? I don't know about y'all, but when I was first taught uchikomis, this guy stands still, upright, and we hang on to each other. And uh, they told us, take a big step back, like get running room, like... Uh, like you have to have room to run in here and you step in here and you set him off balance a little bit and you bump him and you step back and you get plenty of running room and you step back in and and do your thing and you you do repetitions of like uh, bump him nine times and throw him the tenth time that sort of thing uh, you can do this with any throw you can you can back out and get plenty of running room and step in for this thing or whatever um, so the thing to do today just to warm up to this idea pick whatever throw you like uh, something that's easy like Seo Nagi or Osotogari right and let's do some Uchikomis uh, and let's do it uh, the old way that we used to make lots of fun of the running room thing stretch your leg back and then step in onto the line if you're doing Osotogari and bump him. Once you get back here again to where you've just got a little bit of tension in your arms like ropes, stretch your leg back and step in. All right? And you might uh, do nine bumps and then throw him on the tenth, that sort of thing, back and forth. 
Spread out, we've got when you reach that leg back and put it back, I'm still not in position for the throw. So you've got to reach back and then walk through this distance until your feet are in a line with him. Thank you. I know, it feels weird, doesn't it? Yeah. It feels like she's getting on a little deeper than, uh, like on the setup than where she would be normally when we're practicing. We, we made yeah. huge amounts of fun of our instructor for for <laughs> telling us uh, to get lots of running room and jump in there and, okay. and bust in. And, uh, it took some years for me to figure out what he was getting at. <laughs> and it's the same thing that Hirano was getting at. So we'll start here. Sort of, uh, if you if you get here and there's a lot of slack in your geese, then what I do with my leg doesn't really do anything to me. Yeah. All right, so back off until there's just a touch of tension. And when I reach my leg back, it changes here. All right, I'm I'm using the weight of my leg and my butt to pull him here. Yeah. All right. So if he's going to remain upright, he's got to react back against that. All right, so I stretch back to create a reaction in him so that I can step in. Okay. Thank you. Sure. And push him down over your leg. When you push, you separate him from you. You actually want to uh, reach your leg back, step in and pull him to you. So both hands cling to you right here as you step in. At least for this form. Yeah. There, there's lots of two great examples here. This was inadvertent on my part, but she picked uh, Seo Inagi and most folks picked uh, Osotogari. And it turns out you get a different sort of uh, mechanic going on. Jules? Uh, <coughs> So why the running room thing? It teaches, you, it teaches beginners some things like make large motions and it's generally easy to learn, but it also uh, starts to get him in motion, all right? For, for beginning Uchikomis, this guy's job is to stand upright, right? And don't be a pushover, right? You don't have to fight with me, but don't be a pushover, right? When we set those conditions, then all of a sudden it's hard to get him into, into motion with your hands, all right? We've uh, probably most of us done uchikomis where we tell this guy, you stand there like a dummy, and my job is step one, pull him like this, step two, step in like so. Well, it turns out that uh, when he actually plays his role and that won't pull him up onto his toes, right? So how do I get him into motion? All right, All right? So if, my, if the connection between us is slack, what I do with my leg doesn't do anything to him, right? But if I back off until I can feel a connection, what I do with my leg affects him, right? Hirano was huge into waves. He, he was a wave fanatic. And he was always watching ocean waves and uh, trying to apply that to how, how does that, how do you see those waves in, in judo? If you're going to do Osotogari, for instance, I, I back off until I have a little bit of uh, connection. There, my momentum that way forced him to react this way, all right? Uh, some of Hirano's students call that hondo, which means reaction or kickback or something like that. So you do something to the guy to create a reaction, which you then join with. <clears throat> all right, so you can do Uchikomi's throwing a leg back, using a much larger part of me than my hands and my biceps to uh, get him into motion. All right, everybody is so concerned with step in and drag this arm down, right, and try to get, well, people that are 
opposing you are good at figuring that out, right? When I start doing this, he, he figures that out real quick and he hits me, right? But if I use my butt to put some of that motion on him, he reacts back because he thinks the fight's over here and it's over here, all right? That was one of Carl's big lessons for years was if this guy's fighting me with that leg back and I want to reap it, I put some, some of the exact opposite motion into it. Right. Hey, let's play that. Take your hands, connect to him, and back off until you can feel a little bit of connection between you. And then watch what uh, pushing your leg back does to him. Follow that into Osotogari. And then in a minute, we'll work on uh, Sui Nagi. Um, it's a good thing, but we're going to relax it for right now. I, I back off until I have a little bit of traction on him. And then step four feet in a line. So I'm trying to, to almost get him to pull me four feet in a line with his reaction. Yeah, it can slide around him and hook or it can it can bend, but if you uh, keep it straight, it pushes him away from you yeah. Yeah. and yeah. You, you lose the throw. The throw you want to do, right? If I don't want to have to just bodily pick him up and throw him down, I need to get him in motion, at least like this sort of motion, like put some sort of vibration on him and then judo joining join with that vibration when it's to my advantage that's the keto idea right so if i'm going to do uh, shoulder throw and i reach back that puts a forward on him when i let go it puts a backward on him i don't want to try to shoulder throw him when he's leaning back away from me but if you take a guy and tell him to be upright and sturdy and you put a little bit of forward on him he reacts back and then he fixes himself, right? So it's not like forward, backward, and that's it. That's your only chance. This vibration will continue for a bit. There's the back. There's the forward. And here he comes again, right? So the idea is to get in, put a wave on him and get in sync with it. There it is. All right. All right. Whichever, whichever throw you like. Uh, Sui Nagi's not fitting us right now. But uh, if it's a forward throw and I induce him like that, I've got to wait for it to come back around to get in sync with him. All right. So play the thing with your partner with Sui Nagi. You don't have to uh, bust them, but you might pick them up and set them back down on their feet. Uh, but time your fit such that they are starting back into this. This they'll actually step back out from under themselves into the throw. You've seen that? They'll step back. Yeah. I put this on him. Be strong. All right. Yeah. Right. And when he steps back, he's putting his feet behind him. Mm -hmm. So he's asking for, for that thing. Oh, okay, so that makes it even easier now. Right. Okay. Right. If you, uh, you have to be uh, real facile with your hands. Right? If you're, if you're clamping down, if you try to ring a tuning fork and you're holding it, it doesn't ring. It doesn't even buzz, right? But if you, uh, if you hold it lightly by the proper part, you can ring it, right? You can ring this guy by putting a little bit of tension on him and then relaxing. And there he is, back forward. Okay. If you clamp down on the guy, then you damp out that vibration. Step in and clamp the back of his neck for a kubinagi or something. Okay. All right. It doesn't matter the throw. Yeah. What we're looking at is doing a forward throw on him 
after inducing him like that, you have to wait a, wait a bit. Can I ask you to feel it on him? Because it, it feels completely different when he does it than me. There he is. Jeez, that's subtle. That's nice. <laughs> right? So if I get excited and I jump in, I'm never going to get Osotogari because you're you're in the, that part of the vibration. Okay. Not a sort of, I'm not ever going to get Seiwe Nagi. Right. Did you, when you moved your feet, you, you fixed it, but. There it is. One more time, please. So, you're leaning forward, you're leaning backwards, and you're leaning back forward. And that's where you're coming in. Okay. Mm -hmm. You extrapolate just a little bit if uh, if I can grab somebody and do something to put a vibration on them forward backward we just saw then uh, <clears throat> having done enough uchikomis that way I can figure out how to fit to that vibration at a time when it benefits me and it doesn't benefit him it turns out that uh, this is not the only uh, degree of freedom for the human body so uh, Hirano did a lot of weird looking uh, drills to try to get different vibration components into Uke so that he could learn to fit them right you can take your same uh, your same throw that you like uh, it doesn't matter the throw this time what we're going to do to induce the vibration is uh, look over your shoulder at your foot mm. right? and look at your foot several times and when you feel what that's doing to him <coughs> join with that oh, see I got I caught him going back right so I need to do that exercise some more there it is and turn into it all right or you might look at your foot several times and join it there, okay? We're uh, complex folks, so we have a lot of degrees of freedom, so we're gonna need several of these exercises that are going to look weird when we take them into their individual pieces. But then I think later we will see crazy motion like the violent things that you see in a tournament break down into or they either break down into a collection of those singles or you can find just an instant right when we're moving around like this here fight with me right when we're moving right there there was there was just an instant that I was able to recognize of this thing of this thing right so hopefully if we have done enough uchikomis with enough of these degrees of freedoms, then we can start to recognize in Rondori when to jump on him and when to move with him. All right, so t take your partner, back off from him just enough to where you can feel uh, some connection. And look at your foot, and look at your foot over and over until you feel the time to step into your throat and try some uchikomis. How do you develop this skill that uh, allows you to beat up 700 people a year? Uh, and I don't know how much, how well he spoke English, but I've got to imagine that there was some, some communication barrier there. So when I see Hirano, when I watch him, the story that goes on in my mind is he comes out and says, all right, pay attention, prehistoric screwheads there's like seven kinds of waves some of them look like this and it's almost like he's got a giant canvas and he says wave number one looks like this and then he takes a guy and says some judo is like that and he busts him and he goes back to his starting place this is his kata that began to uh, be codified and I don't know if uh, it was ever completely finished, but uh, it's very similar in all the renditions 
then he comes back and says, all right, wave number two. Some waves look like this and then they hit a rock and they wash along the shore like this. And he takes an uke and does another throw and busts him and says, some judo is like that. And then he takes another uh, group of people and he says, some waves start out like this and turn into a whirlpool. Right? So it's almost like he's uh, miming this for folks that he can't get the idea across to. Some, some waves turn into whirlpools and when they get up here, they splash. Yeah. Right? I think if you go back and watch the YouTube videos of this guy doing his kata, uh, the same story will play in your head. Some waves start out like this and come in here and they seem like they've subsided but there's still some motion and all of a sudden something happens, right? Sometimes they, they wash in and just eddy like this, right? So what he did with this kata was uh, he broke up his takui waza, his throws that happened over and over again in competition and uh, divided them into waveforms. So let's, uh, let's play with the first one. Who's going to be my victim? You can, all right, you just stand right here. All right, listen up, people that I can't make understand me. Some waves <laughs> look like this. And they just wash in gently. All right, and he would take his partner and almost kneel under the ground, be sturdy. Right. Almost kneel under the ground and then stand up and pick this leg. Mm. I think you, uh, if you go back and watch some of Model Sensei's videos, you'll see that very same Osotogari. All right. Also, uh, Hirano Sensei, sometimes when he demonstrated, sometimes when he demonstrated this, he did all the arm waving and sometimes he didn't, which suggests to me that it's a, it's a teaching thing or it's a every so often practice sort of thing, right? So you don't have to wear a tutu and do the dance because he's saying, I mean, once you've figured out that he's saying some waves look like that, uh, there's not much point to that dance anymore. Some of his students that you see do the thing will just hook up here, put a lot of pressure on him, right? I'm trying to bury his weight into this foot and then let go of it and see doesn't it uh, become light, all right? Practice this with a partner, y'all uh, spread out. You don't have to do the wave thing, but just imagine some waves wash into the shore and that's the end of them, all right? to put a lot of weight on him back here and I let go he springs forward and I have to wait and wait and wait until I get my chance for a, the throw that we're looking for if I put a lot of weight on him here when I let go he springs back into the throw right so uh, you don't have to worry about burying his arm behind him for the off balance. Because that makes it tough. All right. Second of all, and this is kind of cool magic, just standing here, his leg's kind of hard to move, right? But if I bury some weight on that and then let go, his leg is very light. All right, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a forward backward wave going in him and we're trying to catch the leg when it's light. So it's something like this and something like that. All right, it's a very easy Osotogari, but you have to get rid of some of your uh, programming like burying the elbow in the back. All right. 
Thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Yame. This is sort of hurried because there's a lot of material here. So uh, write this stuff down when you get off the mat and play with it some in the open mat period at the end of each day. All right, since you didn't understand it when I spoke in Japanese the first time, some waves look like this. But sometimes they hit some resistance and they wash along the shore. All right, who's my next participant? Somebody jump out here. All right, good. And your job's just to stand here. One of the neat things about this uh, kata is it teaches to throw against light, moderate, and very vigorous resistance. And it teaches you to throw against an opponent that is in stand, uh, natural posture or fighting right side away from you or fighting in jigotai. So there's a lot of variety. There's a lot of uh, good technique in the kata. Uh, I'd be hard pressed to make an argument that this is not a better shodan kata than nage no kata because of the variety and the technique selection, that sort of thing. All right, so he has read up on my book and he has understood wave number one and he's not going to let that happen to him again. So some waves hit some resistance and slide this way. When we hook up and I get ready to drop, he's going to take a step back guarding this leg away from me. Take a step back. There you go. He doesn't want that thing to happen. So I change it that direction. So this wave, just as before, washes in and it, it turns from here to where his uh, weak angle has become. All right, so he steps back. He's still got some, some weakness back there, but it's not here, it's here. All right, so it's Osoto Otoshi. And uh, depending on how vigorously he is uh, resisting against this wave, right, I may have to hop around the corner. All right? So play that. It's probably best since it's like your first time to play it. Take a kind of a moderate step back and kind of relax. When he changes the angle from here to here, this isn't going to do it. But that will. All right. Play that a little bit. And then grab this leg. Other, other, yeah. Okay. Here, let me back away from the wall. Yeah. All right. When you grab that leg, grab, grab my leg. Whoops. Yeah, there you go. Okay. You turned into my angle. Yes. So that it became easy. I see. Right? Thank you. So, so long as I'm standing here, right? Yeah. And you drop and then catch that leg. My angle is, is right there. Yeah. Right? But I don't want to expose that weakness to him anymore. Okay. So you're going to come back. So I come and I have to hop around. Yeah. Now I'm pushing into you. That's right. Now I got you. This angle? The weak line between his feet. Look at this. So long as you're in standard posture, mm -hmm. then I can do my trick and your weak line's right here. Okay. Right? When you fight with this leg back against me, you've still got a backward weakness, but it's not here. It's here. We're going to have to come up with a better Maybe the armband will have run through my time, but not through my material. Let's circle up and uh, go get a drink of water, take a bathroom break, and come on back out. All right, let's circle up. Bravo, Pat. Nice start for the morning.
Got a little bit of exercise. Thank you all for playing with me. Hey. Thank you.